Hi everyone, welcome to today's tech tutorial. As you all can see from the title card, this video is all about Google Docs. Google Docs is a free online word processor offered by Google. Since it's web-based, this means you can access it from any device with an internet connection, such as from your phone, tablet, and even all the way to your computer. I'm sure you're all familiar with the software though, but are you really? Today, we'll be discussing some Google Docs features that you may not know. P.S. We'll be making a very special announcement at the end of our video, so stay tuned. Google Docs also has its own template gallery, where you can choose from a wide variety of templates to suit various purposes. These include templates for business letters, resumes, class notes, essays, newsletters, and many more. In addition, if you want to find more templates to design your Google Docs, all it takes is a simple Google search. Once you find a preferred template, you can import it to your Google Docs by making a copy of it. If you used to be like the old me who had trouble writing mathematical symbols and equations such as fractions or exponents, then this hack will definitely help you a lot. To write mathematical symbols and equations in your Google Docs, simply go to Insert and click Equations. In the equation bar you can find on the top here, there are five categories, which are Greek letters, miscellaneous operations, relations, mathematical operations, and arrows. For example, let's say you want to add a fraction. You can click the mathematical operations one, which is the fourth from the left, and select the fraction. Then you can type and ta-da, you've added a fraction to your Google Docs. Also, notice how when you click insert equations, this small box appears. Essentially, anything inside the box is considered as part of the equation. To find even more symbols, you can click insert, but this time, choose special characters instead of equations. There are various categories with their own different types of special characters that appears. Therefore, if you're searching for a specific special character to add, but you're too lazy to go through all these categories, you can draw it in this box on the right here or search for the keywords. Afterwards, click on your desired character and it will automatically be inserted into your Google Docs. To access this built-in dictionary, select the word you want to find the definition for. Then, go to Tools and select Dictionary. Otherwise, you can also just press Command Shift Y. Not only do the definitions of the selected word show up, but also its synonyms. This means you don't need to go to Google and open a new tab anymore. This is very time efficient, especially when you have a deadline and can't spare like three more seconds. In this built-in dictionary, you can also search the definitions of other words that are not in your docs. Have you ever felt tired from excessive typing, but you still need to type more in your Google Docs? Google Docs actually has a voice typing feature where it types for you based on what you say. To enable this, go to Tools and select Voice Typing. A shortcut for this is Command Shift S. Also, make sure that you've already allowed Google Docs to have access to your microphone first. Then, you can select your preferred language here from the various languages available. Click the mic to enable voice typing. Once it's read, you can start speaking and Google Docs will automatically type for you. There's no timer, so you can pause talking whenever you want. To add punctuation, you can just outright say it. For example, subscribe to our YouTube channel, exclamation mark. However, commands such as enter, insert, deleting text, etc. need to be done manually. Once you're done with whatever you want to type, click the microphone icon to stop. You'll know it's stopped once the microphone icon is black and white in color. You can also move this voice typing symbol thing here to any spot you want by simply dragging it around. A disadvantage with voice typing is that sometimes it's not accurate, so make sure you proofread first before sharing your Google Docs with anyone. We often get our ideas or evidence from other people's research papers or websites. When doing so, it is extremely important to add citations, otherwise we'll be flagged for plagiarism. An easy and simple way to add citations is through footnotes, and you can do this in Google Docs as well. Firstly, click the cursor on the spot where you want to insert your footnote. Then, 
go to insert and click footnote or press command option F on your keyboard. Next, simply paste your bibliography. This is extremely useful for people writing an essay with secondary data or when you're too lazy to do in-text citation. Google Docs can also add your citations for you. Again, click the cursor on the spot where you want to insert your footnote. Then, click this explorer symbol on the bottom right. Find your resource online in the Google search here, or you could simply just copy-paste the link. Once you've found the website you want to reference, click this quotation symbol here where it says cite as a footnote. As you can see, Google Docs automatically cites it for you in your footnote. You can also choose your preferred citation format in this three button icon here. You can choose either MLA, APA, or Chicago format. To close the Explore page, you can just click the X button here at the top. Do you have headings or titles that are supposed to be the same size, but you just can't be bothered to change the sizes one by one? Rather than resizing, there's a simpler and faster way to do so. Beside the font type, click the text that says normal text, which is actually your text style. In this drop down menu, you can choose the text style you want to use. So let's say the sentence is supposed to be for our heading. All you need to do is just click heading one, two, or three, depending on the one you want to choose, then click apply. If you have a specific text style format that you want to use in another Google Docs, you can click Options and Save as Default Styles. Therefore, next time when you want to use it, you can just click the button that says Use the Default Style. Of course, if you want to reset it, you can always just click the Reset Styles button. You can actually change your settings so that you can edit and access your Google Docs offline. To do so, go to File and click Make Available Offline and turn it on. You only need to turn this feature on once because it will automatically do it for all your other files. Allowing editing offline means that you don't have to be so dependent on your internet connection. Hey, Semi friends! We are really happy to officially announce that Tectorial has over 100 subscribers. To celebrate this first milestone, we are holding a giveaway! Join the giveaway to get a chance of winning a Play Store or App Store gift card worth 5 USD for international viewers and 70,000 rupiah for Indonesians. The rules are written in the description box down below as well as in our latest Instagram post. Also. This giveaway starts now and ends at 8 p.m. GMT plus 7 on 16 November 2020. What are you waiting for? Join now! Anyways, once again, we are really grateful for those who have been supporting us. Hope that through our videos, you can learn new things about educational applications to make distance learning more bearable. Also, don't forget to leave a like Subscribe and turn on the notification bell. That's all for now. Bye! Thank you for watching! We hope you all can gain something from this tutorial and learn new Google Docs tips and tricks. Stay tuned for a new tutorial coming next week. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and of course, turn on the notification bell to get notified whenever we upload. See you next time!